The longest psalm in the Bible is Psalm 119. It has been called the Psalm of the Scriptures because it concentrates on one thing, the amazing sufficiency of God's Word for our lives. Open to Psalm 119 today and open your heart to the Lord as we join Scott Pauley in this study. It is our prayer that through God's truth, you will find all you need. We get pretty stirred up at times about things that really don't matter. And then you step back from the emotion of it and realize, well, that was kind of silly and non-productive. But there are certain things we ought to be stirred up about. In our last study, we, we saw the emotion of the psalmist in Psalm 119, verse 136, weeping. Well, now we come to the next section, the section that begins with verse 137 and continues to verse 144, and we see more emotion. Well, what is it this time? Uh, verse 139, my zeal hath consumed me. I wonder, what are you zealous about? Are you a zealous person? Is there some fire in your soul, the right kind of fire? Uh, what do you get hot about? What do you get stirred up about? Your zeal, what, what, what are you zealous about at this moment? Because it's very revealing about our lives. You see, your emotion has to be sanctified by the Lord and by the Word. I wonder, as a Christian, have you lost your zeal? I wish I had time to walk you through Scripture and show you the zeal of the Lord in people's lives. The psalmist refers to the zeal of the Lord. Uh, our Lord Jesus uh, refers to the zeal of God's house, eating him up. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about his zeal. Uh, he, he writes about a certain man in Colossians 4 who was zealous in his praying. That'd be a great study. Study out the word zeal all through Scripture and ask yourself, have I lost my zeal for the Lord? Am I zealous about the right things? Do you remember one of our Lord's disciples was a man named Simon the Zealot? The Zealots were a political group, an action group in Jesus' day that wanted to take action against Rome. They were zealous, all right. They wanted to take up swords and march on the government. Uh, but that zeal wasn't going to bring about the needed change. I love the fact Jesus just captured that man and consumed Simon with a zeal for something far greater. Uh, not for the political, but for the spiritual. Not the temporal, but the eternal. I think we all could use that right now, the zeal of God to consume us again. And really, the entire section, Psalm 119, verses 137 and 144, is all about my zeal. Let's walk through it for a moment, and let me give you some truths. Uh, first of all, in the opening verses, we learn this, uh, that my zeal must be rooted in God's righteousness. Listen to verse 137 and 138. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. In fact, if you look down in the psalm, verse 142, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Verse 144, the righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. He keeps going back to God's righteousness. Now, why is that important? Well, please don't miss this. Because our zeal... Our emotion is not always right. Sometimes I can get worked up about something. I can believe very fervently about something. But it can be misplaced zeal. It can be emotion that really is out of order. You can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. So he's measuring his zeal by God's righteousness. You see, the Lord is always right. His word is always right. I would point this out to you too. If you look at verse 142 and verse 144, God's righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and the righteousness of the word is everlasting righteousness. Now, some days you may be right, and the next day you may be wrong, but God's rightness is always right every day. It is everlasting righteousness. So measure your zeal by God's revealed truth, by the word of God, by the character of God. Does this line up with the Lord? If what I'm zealous about doesn't please God, if what I'm zealous about doesn't line up with God's purposes, if what I'm zealous about and stirred up about, no matter how sincere I may be about it, uh, does not connect to eternity, then maybe I need to get it in check and bring it back in line with God and God's righteousness. My zeal must be rooted in God's righteousness. Uh, repeatedly, the prophet Isaiah talked about the Lord being uh, cloaked in zealousness and his righteousness. Uh, our God is a zealous God, and he wants his people to be a zealous people, but he wants our zeal to be in line with his righteousness. And then there's a second truth. 
not only must my zeal be rooted in God's righteousness, but my zeal must be more consuming than my circumstances. Listen to the all of verse 139. My zeal hath consumed me because mine enemies have forgotten thy words. He's dealing with enemies. He's dealing with circumstances that are out of control, people who are coming against him. Please don't miss this truth. The fire on the inside has to burn hotter than the fire on the outside. The fire of adversity and affliction and persecution is going to come. You can't stop that. But here's what you can do. You can keep the fire burning in your own heart, hot towards the Lord, passionate after God. You can keep kindling the flame of desire towards the Lord, and that fire, that zeal can be more consuming than the circumstances that are all around you. And sometimes it's not even just the enemies. In verse 141, he says, I am small and despised, yet do I not forget thy precepts. Look, your zeal has to be greater than your own weakness. Uh, In verse 143, trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. Your zeal has to be greater than your trouble and your anguish. Whatever it is you're dealing with today, there's always going to be something. If you get rid of this, it'll be something different or someone else tomorrow. Here's the answer. you got to keep your heart on fire for God. you got to keep throwing kindling wood and wood on the fire and keep your heart right towards God. I'm reminded of the story of George Weisert, who uh, was going to be martyred for his faith. They took him to the stake. Uh, they, were going to, they were going to put him to death, and they gave him one last dying wish, those religious people did. They said to him, you can choose any psalm you want. We'll read a psalm before we put you to death. And George Weiser very cleverly said, I choose Psalm 119. <laughs> Smart man, I think. And so they, they obliged, and they began to read Psalm 119. And do you know that halfway through the reading of Psalm 119, a letter of pardon arrived? Don't you know George Weiser was glad he didn't choose Psalm 23 that day? He chose the longest psalm, the psalm that we're studying, But in the middle of that circumstance, God intervened. The Lord stepped in. True story from history. I want you to know, you keep your heart fixed on the Lord and zealous towards God and God's word and let the Lord take care of the circumstances. But then in the heart of this section, there's a verse I skipped. Did you notice there was one verse I didn't draw your attention to yet? It's right in the middle of the section. It is Psalm 119, 140, and it says this, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. My zeal must not only be rooted in God's righteousness and more consuming than my circumstances, but my zeal has to be continually wakened by the word. It goes to sleep. We go to sleep on the Lord. Our zeal gets tired at times. It has to be awakened again and again. How does that happen? By the word of God. Only the word of God can stir the embers afresh and kindle the fire and keep it hot in your soul. Friend, Your zeal can be misplaced if it's apart from truth. Paul talks about those who had a zeal, but not according to knowledge. So we we want our zeal to line up with truth. Uh, But even good zeal, righteous zeal, can at times just get cold. Our hearts get calloused and indifferent, and there's only one way to keep the fire burning, and that is got to keep throwing wood on the fire. Keep putting the word in. Keep meditating on who God is. You know, the root word for the word zeal is, is a word that literally meant hot enough to boil. Uh, Watch this. Your zeal, like any fire, like boiling water, has to be tended or it will go out. Your zeal for prayer, for the word, for souls, for every good thing will wane if your zeal for God wanes. So keep your heart after the Lord. Let your zeal for him consume your life. And as you do, God will keep your zeal right for everything else. All you need is found in the Word of God. As you learn it and apply it, you will come to know the God of the Word more and more. Our prayer today is that you will grow in your understanding of Scripture and your love for the one who gave it. You may find additional resources for Bible study at our online home. Visit enjoyingthejourney.org today. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your prayers, support, and thanks for sharing the Enjoying the Journey studies with others.